this, the whole healthcare reform will cause individuals to think more about not only the cost of uh, their healthcare, the value of their healthcare, and the, uh, the wellness function as well. I think. Do you think that is one byproduct of, of all this uh, debate and discussion and revolution, if you will? I think it is. I, I think, you know, from our perspective anyway, the members will actually see for one, I mean, we talked about it earlier, the entire cost of what the employers and the contributions are. And hopefully, you know, this, I know we, the Blue Cross has been pounding the drum for years on this wellness thing. I mean, I know BCN has a big piece on it. Uh, the parent Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan has a wellness program. And I think, you know, it was stated earlier that people have to start taking responsibility whether it's walking, doing something, instead of sitting around the TV at night and eating a bag of chips and, and, and uh, watching Americans' favorite video, you know, they, they need to get up and start doing something, start exercising, if they really want to start controlling the cost. Yeah, I think the thing about them being aware of the cost, we'll, they'll say, holy cow, there's that cost. I think the challenge to us as plant sponsors to develop programs, that sort of thing, is, is say, and here's how what you do links directly to that cost, and when you do something differently, you get to see a direct benefit. That's the really hard part, because uh, there's a, a disconnect. They say, holy cow, it costs too much in general. My premium's too high. Um, but how do I affect that premium, and how do the changes that I make in my personal behavior benefit me directly? That's just human psychology, right? If you see a direct link and immediate feedback, um, and immediate incentives, uh, that's what reinforces behavior change, and that's the challenge to make that happen. Changing human behavior is good. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really worried about what I mentioned earlier, the change of human behavior, just to get people enrolled in their, in, this, in the health exchange if they don't have employer-funded benefit. Um, I mean, I think that it, it, we have a long way to go on becoming a, a, a more well population, I attended a hearing that I think was probably 15 years ago now. It just seems like time is flying by. But back then, some folks came in to testify about the cost of diabetes and the efforts that they were doing to help people, you know, be compliant and not lose their foot or their leg below the knee or their leg above their knee or whatever. And then diabetes cost Michigan. This is not any specific employer or government program or whatever, but overall. One in seven healthcare dollars is related to diabetes. That number, I'm certain, is probably more like one in six now. Because 15 years ago, people weren't as heavy as they are now. Certainly, we didn't have the child obesity rates that we have now. Um, but I'm just more concerned that on January 1st, 2014, there's going to be a lot of confusion about health insurance and how I get it, and I'm supposed to have it, and I don't know where you get it. And what I'm supposed to do, and I don't want to pay for it, and all of those kinds of things. And I think that's going to be the overall personal, you know, that's where people are going to be personally invested first, way before we get them to the point of being invested in, well, now it does cost me this much, and I ought to be doing these things to make that different. And one thing, if I could just add, too, I personal responsibility in making um, Better lifestyle choices is certainly important, but one thing I think is critically important as well. We talk about the W-2, and now healthcare costs, the premiums will be reported. But I, what we need to do a better job of, and it's something we at the association are, are putting out, we call it our cap, cost campaign internally. When it's launched, maybe it'll be different. But explaining to people what makes up their premium. So much of the focus of healthcare reform, um, there was a lot of rhetoric, and there was a lot of talk about health insurers and. Profits, well, across our blue system, on average, over the past 10 years, our profits were 1 to 2 percent, 1 and a half percent. Michigan, uh, you were less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much less. <laughs> different place. So, it, it, administrative costs, people would say insurers are spending 25 percent of their premiums on administrative costs. Well, no, it's closer to about 9 percent, maybe up to 11 in the um, individual market, but on the larger employers, 7 to 9 percent. So, what really is driving up costs? And it's medical care. And how do we harness that? And we've talked a little bit about that, but I think it's an education. I saw a poll recently, uh, just you know, normal Americans out there, and it was shocking their views of what truly drove up costs. And I think it gets to the comparative effectiveness research, more transparency. Um, where are the best places to go? We have our blue distinction centers. Anyone's invited, any hospital to join, but we have certain standards that have been developed 
that you meet. Um, and we find that, for example, in our cardiac care centers, the um, mortality and morbidity, morbidity is much lower, and the costs are lower too. So we have to look at what is driving costs and how do we get and harness that and bring it under control. And uh, it goes back to, it, it cuts across the system. There's not one easy solution, but I think collectively going down where we have to work. There's one more thought on costs, and we'll kind of beat this to death, but an awful lot of what's cost in our system is also doing things that are not necessarily helpful. And I would not be, I, I think that 99.9% .9 of our providers, individual providers who I think about in this case, are doing what they want to do, they think is best for their patient. Um, but I heard a, a very famous physician speak the other day, Dr. Lucian Lee, who's kind of the grandfather of quality improvement in healthcare. And he was discussing uh, his kid who broke his knee or leg or whatever in several places skiing. And they went there and you know, immediately followed him with the surgery. He didn't have a cast or anything. They put him in one of those um, machines that like, bends your knee for you back and forth as you're healing. And you're in there for several hours a day. And the physical therapist explained to him, it is a really, it's a huge improvement because people get up and they can move that knee. Whereas you put them in a cast, and sometimes it's pretty bad. In fact, you might even have to put them back to sleep so you can kind of like, you know, undo everything and get that knee to bend. And that doesn't sound very effective. And his point was, if the new technology is such that that's, you can maintain somebody's functionality that way, but you're using casting, there is, there is no excuse for still doing it the way that you've always done it when you can have that kind of improvement. And I think that the, a lot of that is true. And we hope that the comparative effectiveness of some of the programs that Blue Cross does and some of the programs that MHA does, we hope that we are translating into effective care, the best care for people at the best possible price. We have a way long way to go before we figure out, and look how long it took us to figure out that ulcers are not caused necessarily by stress. 90% of ulcers are related to a bacteria. And you take the right antibacterial drug and they go away instead of spending years and years and years on tagging them. It was a long time coming and it was a very expensive way to deal with a relatively um, inexpensive problem. Imagine what we're doing with a number of much more expensive things where we're spending a lot of money. So there's a lot of stuff in the Affordable Care Act related to bringing down the cost in terms of improving quality. And we all up here are sharing in that right now, but there's, we are you know, drinking out of the ocean when it comes to the, to the places that we have to, to make improvement. Kirk is smiling. And the ocean. <laughs> <laughs>